Hey guys, Chantelle Purcell here. So if you are new, I invite you to go back and watch some of the previous videos that'll lead you to how we got to where we are today. Today's video is gonna be talking about the reconstruction process. I've had some challenges. I wanna share those with you so that hopefully you can avoid some of these same challenges. So I am one week out from my exchange surgery. Expanders and implants are very different creatures. Expanders are the tissue expanders put in place to stretch the skin. They fill forward rather than around. They're kind of really stretching the forward trajectory of your skin, which is referred to in all of this as projection or profile. My expanders, in the end, I was expanded roughly about 485. Um, my radiated side was expanded 25 cc's more than my non-radiated side because the radiated skin doesn't want to stretch as much. Kind of helps to, you know, keep it sort of looking a little more symmetrical um, as we were going through the expansion phase. So going from the expanders to the implants. So what I've learned um, having a radiated breast is that um, the radiated side definitely reacts to expansion and expanders and implants differently and you need to kind of compensate for that as you go. Also, knowing that expanders and implants, um, you'll hear a lot about CCs, the liquid measurement of the saline that they're injecting into the tissue expanders. And then later you talk in CCs as it relates to the, whether it be saline or silicone that is filling the actual implant itself. So with my expanders that I was roughly, we're just gonna say for the sense of this video, roughly like 485 cc's. I felt like that was larger than I wanted to be. But when you convert from expanders to implants, you need to actually up the number. And um, some doctors I've heard have said roughly about 60 cc's. So if you like where you are, whatever number that is, let's just call it we like 100 cc's, right? I liked what I looked like at 100. It's way more than that, by the way, but we're just gonna use that for an example. So if I liked where I was at 100 cc's um, with the expander, then when I go to the implant, I would wanna go to a 160 cc implant um, so that they kind of look a little bit similar because the implant is a lot softer and will sort of naturally uh, mash or smush or squish under your clothing. Whereas the expander, it really doesn't. It's kind of like, you guys, I'll date myself here. It's like the Madonna 1980s, like hard cone bra kind of thing. Like there's no moving it. So I learned a lot about that conversion going from expanders to implants and sort of the numbers, the CCs and how they measure up when you go from one to the other. So in my case, I ended up with 490 cc breast implants. There are variations in breast implants. So you have the diameter, which is how round it is on your body. So that diameter is this number, like eight, 10, 12. You have the projection or moderate profile or a high profile. Some even have an ultra high profile. Profile is this number from here to there, how far you're projecting from the chest wall. So this is 4.7 projection. In that same brand of implants that I received with the same CCs, 490 CCs, there was a whole nother option that we could have gotten. What I received was a moderate, moderate projection, 4.7, and it was a kind of a little bit wider diameter. There was another option called high profile. Make sure if you're a breast cancer patient, that you're asking for high profile or high projection if, if you want your breast to stick out a little bit more, right? So if you don't, then moderate might be very good for you. But if you're looking for a little more projection, ask for high profile or high projection. So the high profile option would have been, I think it's like 12 and a half, so not quite the 13. And 
it's like 6.1 projection. So I would have gotten a little bit more this direction, but the same amount of CCs. So I say this because that's really what I wanted um, and I didn't get it. And there is nothing more devastating you guys than going through breast cancer for starters losing your natural breast one or both of them and in my case I had to wait for reconstruction because I had chemo then surgery then radiation it was an entire year of treatment so I had to wait six months a minimum of six months after finishing radiation before I could start reconstruction breast cancer is hard reconstruction's not easy um, it does present its own challenges and you know physically as well as emotionally so the upside of it all was that over the course of six months as we expanded my skin it was hurting and uh, there were really painful moments but there were also moments where I would look in the mirror in the first time in a year and a half um, I felt curvy I felt feminine and um, and I felt sexy and I was kind of like getting that back um, by the end of the six-month expansion I um, was excited to like put on a bathing suit top and which you know for two years previous I went through two summers with no breasts at all and looking for swimsuits with you know ruffles and trying to hide and then also trying to like embrace and be like I'm just gonna flaunt my flat and you know everyone's different but I did choose for me that reconstruction was actually part of my emotional recovery and healing but I have so many great friends and breasties who've chosen to stay flat whether bilateral or unilateral um, and it's a very personal choice there's no right or wrong answer when I woke up from my exchange surgery and I knew projection was gonna be a lot lower because we took out the expanders, which are kind of like the Madonna cones, right? We took those out, we put in something that was gonna be softer, squishier, all of that. I knew the projection was gonna go down, um, but for that reason was why I had specifically requested the high profile, the high projection implant. The surgery of exchange surgery compared to um, placing the expanders or compared to a mastectomy uh, was way easier um, way easier I had surgery on Wednesday afternoon and by Saturday morning I took my last pain pills didn't need pain pills anymore so there are upsides to this for sure by Saturday you know when I saw myself in the mirror and I realized what had happened and then when I did a little more looking and I realized that this was not a high projection um, option but there was an exact um, number you know like the same one but with better projection and maybe not quite as wide on my body like I don't need boobs under my arm to say that I was devastated would almost be an understatement I mean I was mortified that the silver lining I had worked so hard for and had looked forward to everything got stripped away it's been an emotional roller coaster this past week um, I met with my surgeon yesterday I was honest I had to be and it was hard for me to go in by myself because no one can go with you um, to address this and to bring this up and to say I'm not happy and y'all I lost it I mean I was I was I boohooed I mean I sobbed um, I'm really holding it together today but uh, yesterday was really hard and talking to my surgeon and his PA was really hard so where we are now is that we can do another surgery he feels that we need to wait like three to four months and we can go down a little in the diameter we can go higher with the projection it's been a heavy subject to bring to you guys to share with you guys because I really um, you know there's a fine line and I, I want to be encouraging I want to be uplifting I want to extinguish other people's fears people who you ladies who are following my footsteps and coming behind me like a whole big reason as to why I make these videos is so that 
you're not in the dark because the dark is a scary place to be. I've been there so many times through this whole journey. Um, I also have an obligation to be honest and honest isn't always good, you guys. Like there are hard parts of this journey. I'm so upset that my remedy requires another surgery. So, but I feel like I owe it to myself to be happy. Um, I'm grateful that surgery and reconstruction are options for us and um, and that they're able to do so much with literally nothing. I mean, like, I had nothing. I've, I've come so far, I've worked so hard, I've sacrificed so much of my body, my health, my time, my finances to do this reconstruction and for it to come in anything short of something that makes me feel good and whole and normal. I mean, I deserve all of those things. I'm sorry that it's not all good news, you guys, but again, I would be doing you a disservice if I made everything look like, you know, bubbles and sunshine. I like bubbles, by the way. Love sunshine, I'm solar powered, but um, it's not all good, it's not all easy. With that said, I'm thankful that the surgery went well. I'm recovering well quickly and um, he was able to get some symmetry whereas before, you can see this in a um, previous video, before my radiated breast will always sit a little higher than the non-radiated but he did a bang up job in, as I call, kind of leveling the playing field. I mean, he did a really good job with that. So what he did is he cut through some of the scar tissue on the radiated side to drop it a little bit. So that was good. The other thing that I've noticed post the surgery is um, you can really see, at least I could a minute ago, this one you, looks pretty smooth. This one, since they um, it's the radiated side, you can definitely see that um, the flap of skin that actually exists on both of them, but this one looks really smooth. This one isn't quite as smooth. I'm hoping that as it heals that maybe that it's kind of like indented or whatever. So hoping that will sort of smooth out. Anyway, you guys, it's a sunny day. So I'm gonna go lay my butt by the pool and enjoy the sunny day and I'm gonna enjoy it with my little dog and we're just gonna make the best of it, right? So it's choosing your attitude, I'm choosing it today, and I'm just gonna live in gratitude for the next couple of months and enjoy my health. And um, I just wish you guys so much love and so much strength for your journey. Just know you're never alone. There's a whole community of breasties out there um, and for everybody, like there are breasties for everybody. And, I, and I'm actually now in Atlanta, ambassador for the Breasties, which is a big um, international group of women. Many cities have their own chapters and, um, you know, but there's other forums outside of the Breasties, there's other groups. Um, so find your people, whether it be a mastectomy group online or a triple negative, which I am, a triple negative group online or like in um, Facebook, there are a bunch of different groups. Everybody has a place in this community and I just want you to know that you are never alone and um, If you have any questions anything that I can do to kind of like help you Through your journey, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always here and I'm happy to share Any of my experiences with you because I know Later down the road you're gonna be in my shoes and you're gonna have other women coming to you and you're gonna be holding their hand and guiding them through some really rough patches. But know that for now, I'm doing that for you 100%. And I love you and I'm grateful for you and you're never alone. You are enough and you're worth every bit of this struggle and you're going to make it through to the other side. And in the meantime, let's just all try to live our absolute best life with love and gratitude. I'm thankful for you. Until next time, my friends. Bye.